to You Sports Report is brought to you by the City of Southfield, the center of it all, and Hungry Howie's, famous for flavor. Hello there, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, depending on your viewing habits. Thanks for tuning in to this week's L2 Sports Report. I'm your host, Chase Kaufman. Today's show features an interview with head coach of the women's volleyball team, Ed Rule, plus another get-to-know student athlete on tap as well, and much more. But first, let's check in with Coach Whiting for his conditioning tip of the day. If you're anything like me, you're getting sick and tired of doing bodyweight exercises. So today I found the heaviest thing I own, now I'm going to push it. What are you doing today? Next up on the LCU Sports Report, our good friend Jason Ross Jr. recently caught up with women's volleyball head coach Ed Rule for this week's edition of the Coach's Spotlight. Hi everybody, Jason Ross Jr. alongside Ed Rule, the coach of a team that deserves a pretty lengthy introduction. 33 wins, a program record, WAC tournament champs for the first time in program history, the first ever NAIA tournament's appearance, and the WAC tournament champions of 2019. Coach, I have a poster here for you that I want to show you. You remember this year? It's uh, awesome. Signed yes. by All those signatures player. on it, for sure. Yes, every player on your team after the WAC tournament championship win over Madonna. What does this poster here mean to you? Oh, so it's a it's a great feeling. It's a culmination of a lot of uh, hard work by the team, and, and, and again, uh, my assistant coach was a godsend. He does a great job with uh, uh, peopling, as he calls it, dealing with all the little issues and that stuff. And then uh, I think it's a great thing for LTU because uh, uh, we were able to over the last three years put together twenty win seasons, and then last year we just had a bust out year when they were, you know, the big guns were seniors. So, so yeah, it was uh, definitely extra special and something that you just dream about. And after the season, you guys were given what felt like a litany of different awards. One of them was to you, Coach of the Year, your first Coach of the Year award. What did that mean to you? So I think it's, it's you know, awards are nice. I think uh, celebrating with the team and, and the team meeting before the, the last match at Nationals was the highlights, but it's always great to, to be recognized by uh, uh, the ABCA uh, as one of the premier coaches, a regional coach of the year and that stuff. And that it was beautiful to see all my peers uh, in the coaching world see that. And uh, What impact, what was the influence that the coaching staff attempted to have on the group this year throughout the season? Um, I think we, we took a, a different tact, you know, and again, we, we, we wanted to make sure that uh, the kids weren't burned out. Dave and I both understood that this was going to be a long season. Right. And then the girls don't understand what playing in December meant, you know, and then they were you had to throttle them down when you get in in August because they want to go and fight and, you know, whatever. And you kind of got to, you know, bring that culture of positivity and bring that culture that it is a day in, day out. Respect everybody, fear nobody, do the work. And that's one of those things that uh, the positivity and then also having our great senior leadership helped out with all the small little problems and and whatever and when the team takes ownership it makes the head coach's job way easier and when the assistant coach helps out with uh, as much as dave did it still makes my job way easier uh so so i love the the break on that i think uh uh it was kind of a blessing to have the seniors uh that were so talented all play well at the end of the year too that was uh, pretty amazing uh, um our less is more type thing worked out because we didn't have a serious injury all year so, so we had a couple ankles and, and, and maybe a concussion, potential concussion that somebody was out. But other than that, there was no serious injuries because we like to give them time off so they can still be uh, 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 young ladies and still get their school work done. And then when we get into the gym, we just rock and roll. Mention the championship that you guys won in the rack regular season and the tournament. What do you feel will be the key to repeating that success? We know one of the most challenging tasks in sports is to repeat. What will be the key to doing that? Oh, boy. I, I mean, I think uh, uh, one game at a time, I think, is one of the mantras that we're going to have to have because we got this big bullseye on our back now. And then uh, uh, three of our studs, uh, four of our uh, seniors played a ton of minutes. 
and losing a couple All-Americans and uh, three All-Conferences and one of the best servers in the league. So yeah, we, we've lost a lot. And I think that the key is that we went to nationals and the kids got their win at nationals and the ones that weren't, uh, the All-Americans understood what it takes to be that level and, and got to the show and got to see what it is and got a taste for you know the upper levels of NAI. And I think that that's, that's a huge, huge accomplishment and something that they understand now. I don't have to preach to them what it takes. They've seen it live. We've been there. We, we did some great things against some great teams. So that's one of those things that's a beautiful thing. But reloading, obviously, is one of those things. And then relying on some freshmen as well as some uh, uh, um, upperclassmen to get the job done. So, I mean, it's going to be one of those. This is going to have to be a, a work at everything game or year because uh, everybody sees that 20-0 target on our back. Well, Coach, you used the word beautiful. It was a beautiful season. Pleasure to see you today. Thanks for catching up with me. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Say hi to the family and uh, hope you guys stay safe and healthy. Hope to see you in August. Yes, so we're planning on it. So I'm hoping that everything uh, uh, continues to go well. We got, like I said, uh, uh, 10 recruits coming in that'll help and add. And then again, Jason, thank you for all your help and support. It's amazing uh, uh, to see this as we went along the whole season. Uh, you were there uh, every match that you could. So that was amazing to see, and I really appreciate that. Thanks, Go Coach Blue Devils. Devils. Go Blue Devils. I love supporting you. We had the ability to stay in touch with our student athletes during the pandemic. These get to know segments are hot and ready just for you. Quarantine edition. My name is Rebecca Almanos. I'm majoring in mechanical engineering and I play women's soccer. Right now it's been gardening and help. So keeping me busy and I get to be in nature as well. To binge watch, it was money heist. It was just so exciting and had so many twists and turns. My favorite superhero is definitely Spider-Man. Uh, he just gets to fly through the air. He doesn't want to do that. <laughs> it's to go to New Zealand. It just looks really cool. And I could do a lot of different things like bungee jumping or something crazy like that there. <laughs> just the typical dogs. They have so many different personalities and you could cuddle them or make them come on the run with you. Probably anything Indian. I just love all the different spices and it's a great comfort food. Last week on State Champs Live, Kevin Finn gave an update on the current state of athletics due to the pandemic. This is good news right here, so let's get right to it. The new NAIA guidelines with reference sure. to the fall have been given out. So uh, what are those? 
Yeah, so those impact these sports, uh, football, men's and women's soccer, volleyball, and cross country. Uh, we can return our athletes for practices beginning on August 15th. Um, they can come back right now to work out in individual workouts, although, uh, as you know, in our, our, our current state with the state of Michigan, at what level we're at in um, southeastern Michigan, we can't use fitness centers and gyms right now. So that's not available to them, but they could if our state was allowing it. But beginning August 15th, we'll have sanctioned practices. Uh, they can start competing in actual competitions for soccer and volleyball and cross country on September 5th. And then football season this year will begin on September 12th, which was a little bit of a, dis you know, they're, they're obviously a little disappointed as the athletes. In particular for us, we were looking forward to our um, our opener. It was scheduled to be against Madonna, who's a first year program at football. So I know our coach and our university is working on right now to see how we could maybe reschedule a different match or a different game for football for we still have that uh, game with Madonna later this year. Uh, but it's like the football season went from 11 games to nine. Uh, soccer's going from 18 to 14. Uh, it is necessary. we got to reduce the amount of exposure these student athletes have, and especially when they come back to the campus community. Uh, it's very hard to tell where COVID will be at that point, but, you know, we're all anticipating a, a second wave. Uh, uh, so that's, you know, it's, it's being done out of safety uh, and precautions more than anything. But they'll still be eligible for national championships and that good stuff. Uh, with all the athletes, uh, you know, around, it really does have more of, uh, uh, you know, people have more of a rooting interest as everything yeah, no is happening. About it. And there's always something going on. You know, once we get to September through um, this year being different, obviously, but through May, there's always an event on campus. Uh, Wednesday nights, you know, there's either a basketball or a volleyball match or lacrosse. And then on the weekends, you got baseball, soccer, football. It's really great. Um, and then the other part is that, like I see the volleyball image here, uh, the successes. You know, the teams are competing nationally. Uh, they're getting known. Uh, they're getting some wonderful opportunities to compete in some great tournaments and uh, go against some of the best teams in the country. Uh, it's been really nice. Uh, and you see it equivalent back to the classroom. We just got our grade point average report for the last semester. Every team was above a 3.0 overall, which was the first time we ever had that. So they have 26 teams competing, but at the same time, all of them having their overall GPA above a 3.0 and the engineering and science and architecture curriculums is an incredible accomplishment. You know, through the athletics website uh, and through whatever program it is that uh, you would like to see if you uh, could have an opportunity to play for Lawrence Tech, uh, you can go ahead and recruit yourself. It's a very unique tool. Yeah. And I would tell you, all our coaches are still working right now. And that's what most of them are looking at right now. They're looking at videos that they're being receiving from recruits uh, because they can't go out and recruit physically right now like we used to. So please send your uh, highlight the reels in our coaches uh, will get to it and they look forward to learning more about those who are interested and and don't doubt yourself there's a, a spot for everybody uh, so get your your stuff in um, our coaches are always interested in somebody who first and foremost wants to get that Lawrence Tech degree and then we'll be committed to working hard for one of our teams well there you go and Kevin how long have you been at Lawrence Technological University Since 2001 uh, I started off in career services and then in 2007, I had the opportunity to um, start the Dean of Students role. So yeah, it's been great. It's a nice family here. Uh, I think that's what the students will feel when they are students here. And just really great faculty that do it's just some phenomenal work with growing the minds of our students and getting them opportunities to uh, become the global leaders that we're hoping that they will become. What makes Lawrence Technological University such a special place uh, to get an education? And if you are a student athlete, the opportunities afforded to those individuals as well. I think the first thing I always say to people is the faculty, great faculty who really care about the students, uh, faculty that like to extend their learning beyond the classroom. Uh, you know, I, I will say when I did my undergraduate degree, it was at a different school. I didn't see faculty offer me opportunities to practice what I was doing in the classroom with opportunities either in a work setting or in a laboratory or on a research. That is very common here. And just, I think that makes it just really, really develops the learning and helps those students uh, get just much more experience. The second thing is that combine that now, we have many student life things. So those things that you wanna do outside the classroom, whether it be athletics, whether it be music, like our band and dance, whether it be working in one of our uh, theater groups, uh, being involved in Greek life, there's other things to complement that experience back. And that connects you back to a very involved alumni base who really care a lot about uh, uh, this university where it's at right now, but also connecting with the current students and making a um, making sure that they have the success. So I think, again, it's part, uh, it's part of becoming a part of a family and growing that, and that's what makes it really unique here.
We hope you enjoyed this week's LTU Sports Report, and remember to hit that like or follow button on all of our social media platforms at LTU Athletics. I'm Chase Kaufman. Stay safe and enjoy your weekend.